a pleasant good afternoon to all of you. So I welcome you all for the afternoon session of uh, today's uh, FDGP program. So today we have with us Dr. Yes Nagan, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Tiagaraja College of Engineering, Madurai. So with us to deliver sessions on uh, reflection of beams. So he is going to cover uh, uh, double integration method and Macaulay's method of uh, reflection of beams. So I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Yes Nagan to the uh, participants. So I'm very much uh, delighted to introduce Dr. S. Nagan because he's my teacher. And uh, Dr. S. Nagan has uh, completed his uh, B. Civil Engineering from Tiagarajan College of Engineering in the year 1990. And he has secured university first rank. And uh, in the year 1992, he has completed his ME Structural Engineering program from TCE Madurai again. And he has secured first class with distinction. Then he completed his PhD in the year 2006. And Dr. S. Nagan is very uh, well known for his PhD guidance. He is a recognized supervisor of Anna University Chennai. And under his supervision, um, uh, 18 scholars have completed their uh, PhD, and nine more scholars are pursuing their PhD program. And uh, regarding his uh, uh, career, so uh, he is uh, having about 31 plus years of experience in teaching and research. And to his credit, uh, he has applied uh, one patent. Uh, titled uh, the heat curing chamber and also he has published one patent on method of preparation of uh, geopolymer concrete using alternative fine aggregates under ambient curing so in the month of october 2020 and to his credit he has completed about uh, three sponsored projects funded by aact new delhi and dst new delhi uh, he has about uh, 46 papers uh, in his credit, he has pub published 46 papers in various international journals, and also he has published uh, papers in conferences <clears throat> also. And uh, he is also he's also famous for his textbook on engineering mechanics. So he has three textbooks, engineering mechanics, statics, engineering mechanics, dynamics, and also engineering mechanics on statics and dynamics. And he has published his book with Tata McGrathill Publishing Company Limited, New Delhi. And uh, he has also delivered uh, many uh, special lectures, invited lectures, to various institutions and uh, he has offered his consultancy services to various uh, state uh, uh, and central government agencies and also to various private companies and uh, he has also received many honors prizes and awards and uh, he's also serving as member for inspection committee for aact and also the member of inspection committee for affiliation of anna university he's also serving as a, a member of board of studies for various reputed institutions and also he is serving as doctoral committee member for uh, a PhD research scholars and uh, yeah and also he is uh, uh, serving as an external member for PhD viva was examination of research scholars of Anna University Chennai Anamala University and Katpakam University, Coimbatore. And uh, so we are very much happy to have Dr. Na S. Nagan for this particular FDDP program. So I welcome you, sir, on behalf of all the participants present here, and also on behalf of Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering. So may I now request Dr. S. Nagan to take over the session. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. And I first uh, thank uh, Dr. Kubuda Hachodi of uh, Civil SPC for having considered me as a, a guest faculty for this uh, FPP program. I thank the institution SPC for this opportunity. And uh, let us start um, the session on deflection of beams. Okay. So let me share my screen first and then see. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the screen visible yes sir but uh, ppt is not there the black screen is there oh ppt is not visible 
Yes, sir. Just uh, we are able to see the only black screen. Oh. How about now? Yes, sir. Now it's visible. Yeah, PowerPoint is opening. Yes. Oh. Fine, sir. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so let us have the uh, topic on deflection of beams. Okay. So we are going to see two methods, as Madam pointed out, uh, the double integration method and Macaulay's method. Okay. So before uh, starting the double integration method uh, to our students, what we should do is we should first teach them how to find bending moment at a section because that is more important while, uh, before proceeding to the deflection of uh, beams. Okay. So we should teach them in a better way to, to write because once the equation goes wrong, then everything will go wrong. So we need to uh, teach them the taking because though they might have already studied with the review of the uh, bending, uh, taking bending wood at any section becomes essential. Okay. So uh, let me touch on few, uh, that point a uh, few, few slides and then we'll go to an actual double integration method. So every book or every person will have their own sign convention, uh, but the sign convention which we are going to use, or I'm, I'm going to use in this entire presentation will be this sign convention for bending moment. Okay. So LC means left clockwise, LAC means left anti-clockwise, RC means right clockwise, and RAC right anti-clockwise with sign plus, minus, minus, plus. So this convention which we'll be following for this uh, entire uh, presentation. Okay. So this we should tell them, uh, tell our students initially what the, what is the sign convention which we are going to follow for finding menu at any section. Okay. So with a small example, let us start. Say if I want, I have a cantilever beam like this, and it is subjected to a UDL of 12 kiloton per meter over a length of uh, 1.5 meter from the uh, free end. Okay. So we need to teach them. How to find bending moment at this given section? Okay, bending moment at x-axis because this is essential for our uh, deflection calculations. So bending moment at the x-axis. So we need to analyze either to the left side of the section or to the right side of the section. Okay. So if we take to the right side of the section, we have a UDL of 12 kiloton per meter acting over a length of x meters. Okay, acting over a length of x meters. So we know that bending moment is force multiplied by distance. So we should teach them how to find the force first and that distance. Now in case of uniformly distributed load, force is given by intensity multiplied by length over which it acts. Okay. For example, if I take a portion BC and I consider a section XX, if I see to the right side, I have intensity is 12 and it is acting over a length of X meters. Okay. So 12 into X, this will be the force. So always you we'll, should uh, practice them in a way, in such a way that they should write a force within bracket so that they will not get confused with the force and distance. Or so actually this X is not distance, but the length over which the uh, UDL acts. Okay, So this comes a force component and this is the distance component. So a force component will be 12 multiplied by X and distance component will be, say this much uh, amount of UDL will be concentrated at its center. Okay, that we all know Okay, in case of UDL. The resultant of the UDL will act at the CG. So if we take if we take this uh, uh, length x, uh, so over this length x, the resultant of this UDL will be concentrated at a distance of x by two uh, from uh, the section as well from the free end. Okay, the center the center of gravity will lie at uh, half. That is x by two from both sides. Therefore, this x by two is the distance. So force multiplied by distance will be the bending moment. So force multiplied by distance. Then we will come to the sign. Okay, then we come to the sign. How we got this minus sign? Okay. So our section is here, and we are analyzing to the right side of the section. Okay, right side of the section, and therefore we need to take either this RC or RAC. Okay. So to the right side, 
what is the nature of the moment produced by this UDL? Okay, what is the nature of the moment? So the moment produced by this UDL will be, say, it will, if say imagine we are standing here or we are considering a point here. So this, uh, these uh, loads, uh, this uh, load will uh, make or produce clockwise moment about this section. Okay. In case if I consider a moment produced by this load about this section, then this load will be producing anti-clockwise moment like this. Okay. It will be producing anti-clockwise moment. So that we should teach the students clearly what is the nature of the moment produced. Okay. How to see the uh, nature. Okay. So if, since it is to this side, so it will naturally it will be producing a clockwise moment. So right clockwise, right clockwise is minus. Therefore, we have put minus. Here. So the equation will be 12x dx by 2. So 12x squared by 2 or minus 6x squared. This will be the vending motor given section. Okay. Now let us move the section to portion AC. Let us move the section to portion AC. So see here, we should draw a number of diagrams. So we should not teach them with a single diagram. That those, otherwise, they will get confused. So draw a separate diagram, mark uh, portion AC, and mark the section XX in portion AC, and mark this distance as X. This distance as X. So now, betting over at XX will be equal to, so can any one of you uh, tell me what will be the force to the right side of the section, force available to the right side of the section? Because we are going to find bending out at this section. So force available to the right side of the section. Okay. Multiplied by distance is required. So first we should know what is the force. So what is the force acting to the right side of the section? 12 into point five. 12 into? 0.5. Yes. So 12 is the intensity. 12 is the intensity of the load. And it is acting over a length of 1.5 meters. Therefore 12 into 1.5 is the force. Okay. Is the force. So, what will be the distance between the center of gravity of this uh, UDL and our section considered? See, the CG of this load will be concentrated at the center. Okay. X minus 0.5 by 2. Yeah, very good. So, I'll tell you, say the CG will be concentrated at the uh, distance of 1.5 by 2 from B. Okay, from B. It will be acting at 1.5 from B as well. It will be acting at a distance of 1.5 divided by 2 from C also. So from C also it will be producing like. But we want the distance between the section and the resultant of the load. Therefore, this distance we require. Okay. So that as told by sir, uh, x minus 1.5 by 2. Okay. X minus 1.5 by 2 will be the distance between the section considered and the uh, resultant of the load. So. Uh, we should teach our students clearly this aspect, finding force and distance. They will make mistakes only in this. Because this is more essential for our uh, double integration. Because we are going to write uh, bending moment equations. And those equations need to be integrated over the uh, domain or over the length over which it acts. Okay? Or the force in which we consider. So for that, this becomes essential. So this should be taken. This they might have studied in the earlier class semesters in the engineering mechanics. Okay. However, we need to recall. Similarly, uh, in case of simply supported beam, this, this in case of cantilever beam, we can straight away uh, proceed from the free end. Okay, we can always proceed from the free end without finding the support reactions. But in case of simply supported beam, initially we need to find the support reactions. Okay, the support reactions uh, can be found using the static equations of equilibrium. So the static equations of equilibrium are sigma v equal to 0 and sigma m equal to 0. Also, we have sigma h equal to 0, but here we don't have any inclined load or uh, lateral load. Okay? Therefore, you lose sigma v equal to 0. So if you use sigma v equal to 0, so whenever we use equations, then that equation, should, we should have some sign conversion. So sigma v means sum of vertical forces with the sign conversion upward as positive. Okay? Upward as positive. So if you use that side conversion, here will be Ra plus Rb minus 10, because this is downward. So Ra plus Rb minus 10 equal to 0. Therefore, Ra plus Rb equal to 10. This is equation 1. Then we need to use sigma m equal to 0. So whenever we use uh, any equation, we need to use some sign conversion. So here I will use clockwise as positive. So clockwise moments is positive and anti-clockwise negative. So taking, uh, uh, considering clockwise moments as positive, and taking moments of all forces about A, 
okay we are going to take moments of all force about a so first we have this 10 kilo newton force so this 10 kilo newton will produce a moment of force is 10 and distance between this 10 kilo newton and our point a is 3 meters so 10 into 3 and this will produce clockwise moment of plus so plus 10 into 3 and this rb rb will produce an anti clockwise moment about a so rb into 6 will be minus rb into 6 therefore rb can find if substituting here we will be getting rea so this uh, general uh, strat using the static equation of equilibrium also we should teach them and also we should teach them how to find without these uh, static equation of equilibrium if it is a symmetrical load so if the loading is symmetrical then we need not go by uh, these things so we can straight away use say uh, because of symmetry ra should be equal to rb should be equal to total load divided by in case similarly if it is subject to the UDL over the entire span, there also it, uh, loading is symmetrical, therefore total load divided by 2 will be the reaction. And in case if it is a non-central load, if it is a non-central load, then this side reaction will be uh, force into this distance divided by L and this side reaction will be equal to force into this distance divided by L. Namely, WB by L will be for RA and WA by L for RB. So these things also we should uh, teach them because in the examination, uh, say if uh, they have symmetrical loading, they need not uh, waste time with this. Okay, so when finding reaction, they should not uh, consume more time. If it is uh, there are several loading, then necessarily we need to use the static equation of equilibrium only. But if it is a single load or symmetrical load, then we can use the uh, or exploit the principles of uh, symmetry. Now, in case of simply supported beam, also we need to uh, teach them how to find venue at a given section. So let us take first portion AC, it's not point AC, it is portion AC. So portion AC, consider section XX at X distance from left end, okay, at X distance from left end. So what will be the bending at XX? Can anyone please? Let us analyze from the left side. Force multiplied by distance. What is the force available on the left side? Five kilonewton, sir. Five kilonewton. And distance between this five kilonewton and our section is x. X. And what is the nature of moment produced by this? Left side, clockwise. Clockwise. So as per our sign convention, left clockwise is positive. Therefore, plus five into x will be the equation. Now, if we move the section to portion CB, okay? portion CB. Then if we take moment from the left end, treating this distance as x. So when I take section at xx, then here on portion CB, I have two loads. This 5 kN load is here and this 10 kN load is here. Okay. So the moment produced by this 5 kN load will be 5 into x. And this will produce clockwise moment, clockwise moment. And it is to the left side. So left to clockwise, left to clockwise is as per our sign comes in, it's plus. So 5 into x is plus. Then this load, 10 kN load, this will produce a moment of force is 10 and distance between uh, the point of application of this load and our section is x minus 3. Okay? This is x. If I deduct this 3, I will get the distance between these two. Therefore, x minus 3. And this will be producing left anti-clockwise moment because this uh, force will be producing anti-clockwise moment about this section. So left anti-clockwise is minus, therefore minus 10 into x minus 3. So here equation will be 5x minus 10 into x minus 3. So these equations are uh, very important in the uh, double integration method. So now we will uh, proceed to the uh, finding, uh, proceed to finding uh, slope and deflection of beams using double integration method. Okay. So from the name itself, from the name itself, we can understand that integration will be done twice, okay, twice to get the required values. So let us take a cantilever beam with point load at the free end. Okay, we can take a cantilever beam with point load at the free end. So we have a cantilever beam. We have a point load capital W at the free end. We need to find the slope and deflection at different points. Okay. So uh, this is the general differential equation which we have, which we call as the beam uh, bending equation or flexural equation. General uh, uh, second order differential equation for flexure. So E i d square by d x squared equal to minus m x x. Okay. E i d square by d x squared equal to minus m x x. This is the second order differential equation for uh, all flexural problems. Okay. 
Now we are going to use this equation for solving this problem. So ea d square by dx square equal to minus mxx. Let us say, take this minus n. Uh, first, we will find the mxx. Okay. So when you want that xx will be equal to when you view from the right side, when you view from the right side, force is capital W and distance between line of action of this force, distance between line of action of this force and our section is x. So W into x. And this will produce what will be the nature of moment produced by this force? What will be the nature of moment produced by this force? Clockwise or anti-clockwise with respect to section XX? Audience, please. Clockwise. Clockwise? Please, anyone of you unmute and tell me. Clockwise from the right. Okay, it will produce clockwise moment with respect to the section. And since it is the right side, right clockwise, right clockwise is negative, therefore minus w into x, minus w into x. Therefore, ea d square by dx squared equal to minus of minus wx, which will be wx. So this is the equation number one. So ea d square by dx squared equal to w into x is the equation one. Okay. Now, integrating this equation, Integrating equation 1 with respect to x. So if you integrate this equation, we'll be getting ei. d square by dx when and integrate will get dy by dx equal to w x when integrated will get x squared by 2. And we'll be resulting in with a constant of constant of integration. Okay, whatever you integrate, you'll get a constant of integration. So that will be c1. Okay. And this is equation 2. Okay, this is equation 2. We need to integrate this equation 2 with respect to x again. Okay, so if you integrate this equation, I'll be getting ei dy by dx will be, if you integrate, I'll get y equal to w x squared when integrated, I'll be getting x2 by 3. Already there's 2, therefore x2 by 6 plus c1 x, c1 x. And I'll be getting another constant of integration plus c2. And that is the equation. Okay. So, since we do two times the integration of the general uh, differential equation, it, the method is called double integration method. Okay. I repeat, ei d square by dx equal to wx is the uh, equation which we arrived earlier. We need to integrate this once. So, if we are integrating, we will be getting ei d by dx equal to w x squared by 2 plus c1, that is equation 2. When I integrate again, I will be getting ei y. Okay. This will become ei y. And this will be w x2 by 6 plus c1 x plus c2. Okay. This is equation 3. Now, we need to find the constants of integration c1 and c2. Okay. We need to find the constants of integration c1 and c2. So, these constants of integration can be found using the boundary conditions of the problem. Okay. Using the boundary conditions of the problem. Okay. Now let us see what will be the boundary conditions. So if this is this is a cantilever beam and it is loaded with the uh, point load W at this free end. So how will the beam deflect? How will the beam deflect? So the beam will be deflecting like this. Since it's a downward load, there will be maximum deflection under the load point and the deflection will be gradually uh, reducing and it will be zero at the fixed support. So the dotted line shown here, the dotted line shown here represents the deflected shape of the cantilever beam. Okay. And if you notice, near the fixed support, this uh, dotted line is getting merged here. It's getting merged here. Okay. So that represents that uh, there is no slope. There is no slope at the fixed support. There is no slope at the fixed support. Similarly, there is no deflection at the fixed support. Okay. So we very well know or we, or we should know the, the behavior of the supports and uh, the uh, slope conditions. Okay, say in case of fixed support, in case of fixed support, there won't be any deflection as well. There won't be any slope. Okay. However, in case of simple support, free support, or roller support, or hinge support, okay, 
in case we have a free support or roller or injury support, then their deflection alone will be zero, but the slope will be there. Okay, the slope will be there. So these are the conditions of support condition. Support condition. These are the various support conditions. A fixed support, at fixed support, there won't be any slope. Similarly, there won't be any deflection. In other supports like free support or roller support or injury support, there will be slope. Definitely, there will be slope, but the deflection will be zero. So this can be used as boundary conditions. Okay? Similarly, if we see here, uh, what is slope actually? The slope is nothing but the angle between the tangent of the curve, the angle between the tangent of the curve and horizontal, okay? horizontal axis. Angle between the tangent of the curve and the horizontal axis is the slope. Okay? So here, if you see in the diagram, uh, mark what is slope. So here, we'll be having maximum slope. If you see in this uh, cantilever beam, it deflects like this. Here, deflection will also be maximum. Similarly, we'll be getting a slope also. The slope theta will be maximum here in this point. And if you go uh, proceed from the right end to the left end, so if you proceed, the slope also gradually gets reduced. Similarly, deflection also gets reduced. And when, when we come to the fixed point, that if you draw a tangent here, if you draw a tangent here, the angle between the tangent and the horizontal axis will be zero. That indicates that slope at fixed support is zero. Similarly, deflection at fixed support is zero. So we call this theta as the slope or dy by dx. Theta is called as dy by dx or slope. Okay. Now, I want to write the boundary conditions. Boundary conditions means the, at the boundary points, at the boundary points. So the boundary points in this beam are the uh, fixed support point A and the free, free, freely supported point or free end B. Okay, these are the two boundary points. So at the boundary points, at the boundary points, what will be the value of the slope? What will be the value of the deflection? Okay, at the boundary points, what will be the value of the slope? What will be the value of the deflection? These are called as boundary conditions. Okay, boundary conditions. So we can very well write that at the fixed support, the slope is also zero and deflection is also zero. Therefore, that can be written as a boundary condition as we are measuring x distance from the right end. Okay? From the right end, we are measuring the x distance. So we can very well write the x distance we are measuring from the right. So when x takes a value of L, when x takes a value of L, the slope is 0 as well deflection is 0. Okay? So the boundary conditions can be written as at x equal to L, at x equal to L, dy by dx is 0. That means slope is 0 at the fixed support A. At x equal to L, at x equal to L, y equal to 0. That means at x equal to L, deflection is also 0. In case if we measure x from left end, instead of measuring x from right end, if we take x from uh, left end, the boundary condition will get changed at, as when x equal to 0, uh, dy by dx equal to 0. When x equal to 0, y equal to 0. Okay? So the boundary condition you should teach the student how to write the boundary conditions, how to write the boundary conditions, because they may not understand or they may make mistakes here. They simply they will put x equal to 0, x equal to L like that. So we should know what is x. x is the distance between the, from the free end to any point. Now we require point A. So from the free end to point A, the distance is L. Therefore, when x equal to L, dy by dx equal to 0. When x takes a value of L, y is also 0. These are the two boundary conditions. And this boundary condition, we call as slope boundary condition. We call as slope boundary condition. And this boundary condition we call as the deflection boundary condition. Okay? There are two boundary conditions, types of boundary conditions in any problem, slope boundary condition and deflection boundary condition. Okay? So using boundary condition one, using boundary condition one in equation two. So that also we should teach our students where to use these boundary conditions. They should not use uh, anywhere. Okay? So we need to substitute this boundary condition appropriate equation. So the equation two, if you see in the previous slide, the equation two is the equation two is the deflect uh, slope slope equation. Okay, equation two is the slope equation, and equation three is the general deflection equation. Okay, this is the second order differential equation for uh, beam bending problems, and this is the slope equation, and this is the deflection equation. So we should teach them clearly. We should use slope boundary conditions in slope equation, and we should use deflection boundary conditions in the deflection equation. Okay, So that's why we have written here, uh, using boundary condition 1, 
in equation 2. So EA dy by dx equal to W x y by 2 plus C1 is the equation. So put dy by dx equal to 0, put x equal to L, therefore WL squared by 2 plus C1. And therefore C1 equal to minus WL squared by 2. So C1 equal to minus WL squared by 2. So we have found the constant C1. Now using the second boundary condition, using second boundary condition in equation 3, because this is a deflection boundary condition. So the deflection boundary condition need to be used in deflection equation. So in deflection equation, therefore, when you use this x equal to L y equal to 0 in the deflection equation, that is we have E a y equal to W x cube by 6 plus C1 x plus C2. So y equal to 0 and put x equal to L, W L cube by 6. C1, substitute the value which you already obtained, minus W L squared by 2 into x equal to L plus C2. Therefore, this will become W L cube by 6 minus W L cube by 2 plus C2. Therefore, you can find the value of C2. So C2 value you are getting as W L cube by 3. Okay. So to obtain the constants of integration, we are using boundary conditions. And we should teach our students how to generate the boundary conditions. So they should not simply mug up or they should not do without understanding. So we should clearly explain them the uh, boundary conditions by drawing the deflected shape as well. What is slope? What is deflection? Similar deflection here is the distance between the horizontal axis and the point, the deflected point. Yeah, point. So that will be the deflection. So here uh, the two boundary conditions are when x equal to L, slope is 0. When x equal to L, deflection is 0. Are the two boundary conditions in case of cantilever beams. Okay, in case of all cantilever beams, you can say like this. At fixed support, slope and deflection are 0. So that's, those two will form the boundary conditions. So using the boundary conditions, we are substituting and we have found the constants of integration. So once we have found the constants of integration, when you substitute in the equations, you'll get central equation for slope and you'll get central equation for deflection. Okay. So substituting the value of C1 and C2 in equation 2, you'll get EA dA by dx equal to WX squared by 2 minus WL squared by 2 plus C1 we have. So therefore minus WL squared by 2. This is equation A. This is the general equation for slope. So why do we call this as general equation? Why do you call this general equation? The reason is that is using this general equation, okay, using this general equation, one will be able to find slope at any required point over the length of the beam. Okay, using this equation, one will be able to find slope at any required point over the length of the beam. Okay, say if I want slope at the, at the free end, I need to substitute some x value. When I want to find a uh, slope at the fixed end, I need to use x value, some value, some other value. So, so when this equation helps me to find the deflection, uh, sorry, slope at any required point, hence it is called general equation for slope. Similarly, the general equation for deflection will become EIY equal to WX cube by 6 plus C1X, C1 is minus WL cube by 2X plus C2 plus WL cube by 3. This is the general equation for deflection. And the reason why we call this a general equation is at any required point from the free end to the fixed end, at any required point from the free end to the fixed end, one can be able to find the deflection using this equation. Okay. Now, we want actually the slope and deflection at the free end, okay? because where uh, slope and deflection will be maximum. In case of cantilever beam uh, subjected to a, a point load at the free end, the slope and deflection will be maximum at the free end. That we have seen here in the diagram itself. So you see here, the cantilever beam will be deflecting like this. So slope will also be maximum here and deflection will also be maximum here. So I want to find slope and deflection at the free end. So to find slope and deflection at the free end, first let us get slope at the free end, slope at the free end. So I need to make use of this general equation. So I want slope at the free end. So what should be the x value I should substitute? Please. x value x equal to 0 x equal to 0 because we are considering uh, the origin as free end okay from free end only we are measuring the x distance and we want uh, slope at the free end therefore x equal to 0 so when we put x equal to 0 in equation a so what will happen ea dy by dx ea dy by dx equal to this will get cancelled and minus wl squared by 2 or dy by dx equal to minus wl squared by 2 ea Okay, minus wl squared by 2ea this we can also call as theta b okay, 
that is slope at b can also be uh, represented as theta b and the values will be getting will be in radians okay will be getting in radians <coughs> Now, to get deflection at the free end, to get deflection at the free end, we need to substitute x equal to zero. Okay, we need to substitute x equal to zero in the deflection equation. The deflection equation that is equation capital B, capital B. So when you put x equal to zero, I'll be getting E A Y equal W L Q by three. R Y is equal to W L Q by three E A. W L Q by three E. So these are the standard expressions in case of cantilever being subjected to. Point load at the free end. The uh, maximum slope will be W L squared by two E A, and the maximum deflection will be W L Q by three E A. So we should teach our students how to derive this slope and deflection. Also, they should remember this in case uh, they are applying or appearing for part A type questions. I remember and understand type questions. They will ask, uh, what will be the maximum slope in case of cantilever being subjected to point load at the free end? What will be the maximum deflection in case of uh, Uh, cantilever beam subjected to point load at the free end. So in that case, they should be able to tell W L squared by two E A and W L Q by three E A as the values, slope and deflection values. Yeah. You have any clarification in this? First example. I'll also send this uh, uh, PPT, to madam. Okay. And the main advantage in this uh, PPT is, uh, say, let us all all follow this. If if it is uh, uh, comfortable for you, you can follow this type of uh, to your students. Okay, say you can see this audio symbol here. Okay, similarly, you have you can see the audio symbol. What I, we have done, not what I have done, is after preparing this slide, whatever I explained so far, that has been put in audio form. Okay, that has been put in audio form. This in English and this in Tamil. Okay, yeah, because our, our students will be mostly they are from local students will be there from north eastern they will not be understanding Tamil so to uh, fetch, uh, make them understand I have uh, made as this PPT like this all my, all my lecture notes will be like this I'll be making uh, in the form of PPT along with audio enabled PPTs so that they can read this at any time simply by clicking this audio they can listen to the audio and the entire slide this slide will be explained here in English here. The entire slide will be explained in Tamil here. Similar in every slide, I will introduce audio. Yeah, this you can follow if it is comfortable for you the, to to improve the uh, learning process. Okay, if this is uh, with the student, any student, he doesn't need any support. Okay, he can learn self-learning to improve self-learning. We can adopt this sort of PPTs. Okay, audio enable PPTs. Uh, similarly, I have developed this for structural analysis also because these subjects people uh, they find difficult to understand. Okay, so that we should help them to learn in an efficient or easy manner. Okay? That's why we have. Then we will go to the next example. If there is no clarification, we'll go to the next example of double integration. Okay? So cantilever beam with UDL. Okay? Cantilever beam with UDL. So we have a cantilever beam with uniformly distributed loads. We are going to use the same uh, procedure of doing uh, integrating twice. So before that, we have E A D squared by D F squared equal to minus M X X. Therefore, first we will find M X X. So consider section X X. Consider section X X at X distance at X distance from the free end. Okay. Consider section X X at X distance from the free end. Okay. Now, when you wanted X X will be equal to force multiplied by Distance. So the force available to the right side, force available to the right side of the section will be intensity of the load is W. Okay, intensity of the load is W, and it is acting over a length x. Yeah, okay, W into x will be the force. So always force should be right uh, written within bracket. Okay, force and distance. Multiply distance. So we should tell our students what do we mean by distance because they will uh, simply uh, write any distance. So distance, if you are, if you are, whenever you mention distance, they should be in a position to understand what is distance. Yeah, that is the distance between the section considered. Yeah, distance between the section considered and the CG of the loading, and CG of the loading in case of UDL, and in case of point load, distance between the section considered 
and the line of action of the load. This aspect we should make them make them clear because only in this distance uh, students make a lot of problems, a lot of mistakes. They will they will simply put any distance. Okay, we should make them clearly what is the, what do we mean what do we mean by distance? Distance between the section or the point about which moment is taken and the line of action of the load in case of point load and in case of UDL distance between the section or point considered and the uh, resultant of the load. So here force will be W dx, W dx in the force and distance between the section and the resultant of the load will be x by 2 and the sex to the right side of the section and uh, this will produce clockwise moment therefore right clockwise, right clockwise is minus according to our sign convention therefore minus W x squared by 2 mx x equal to minus w x squared by 2. Therefore, e i d square a by d x squared equal to minus m x x therefore plus w x squared by 2. That is equation 1. Okay. Now, integrating this equation 1, we will have e i d y by d x equal to w x q by 6 okay, w x q by 6 plus c 1. This will result in with the constant of integration c 1. Now, this equation, this is equation 2. Okay. So, equation 2 has to be integrated again. So, integrating 2 with respect to x, we will be getting e i y equal to w x 4, 4 by 24 plus c 1 x plus c 2. That is equation 3. Okay. So, in both these equations, we involve constants of integration c 1 and c 2. So, we very well know that constants of integration can be found, constants of integration can be found using the boundary conditions. So, it's a, in case of cantilever beam, we very well know the boundary conditions. That is, at the fixed support, slope is 0, as well, deflection is 0. Therefore, the boundary conditions, in this case also, it will be when x equal to L, dy by dx equal to 0, when x equal to L, y equal to 0. And we, we also draw the deflected shape here also. Here again, we will draw the deflected shape like this. Therefore, when x equal to L, slope is 0. When x equal to L, deflection is 0. These are the two boundary conditions. Okay. So, write the boundary conditions at x equal to L, dy by dx equal to 0. That's equation 1. At x equal to L, y equal to 0. Equation 2. So, this is slope boundary condition and this is deflection boundary condition. So, substituting the slope boundary condition in the slope equation, that's equation 2, you'll get Ea dy by dx equal to Wx cube by 6 plus c1, put x equal to L, Therefore, this dy by dx equal to 0. Therefore, wl cube by 6 plus c1. Therefore, c1 equal to minus wl cube by 6. c1 equal to minus wl cube by 6. Now, using the uh, deflection boundary condition, using the deflection boundary condition in the deflection equation, the e deflection equation, we'll be getting ei equal to wx4 4 by 24 plus c1 x plus c2. Put x equal to x equal to l. Here also L, here Y equal to 0, therefore we will be getting 0 equal to WL4 4 by 24 minus WLQ by L into L plus C2, Q by 6 into L plus C2. Now we will be getting C2 as WL4 4 by 8, WL4 4 by 8. Okay. So here the general equation for slope, hence, hence the general equation for slope will be EA dy by dx equal to WXQ by 6 plus C1, C1 is minus WLQ by 6, therefore this is the equation A. This is the general equation for slope. And we already mentioned what is general equation. That is, slope at any required point over the length of the beam. If you are able to find slope at any required point over the length of the beam using any equation, that equation is called general equation. It is called general equation. Okay. Then, the general equation for deflection will be EIY equal to WX4 4 by 24 minus wl cube by 6, that is c1x plus c2, c2 is wl4 4 by 8, equation. Now, in this case also, in case of cantilever beam with UDL also, uh, the maximum slope and deflection will occur at the free end, okay? say the, it will deflect like this, it will deflect like this, so maximum uh, deflection as well maximum slope will be at the free end. So we need to find slope and deflection at the free end. So To find slope at the free end, put x equal to 0 in the equation, the slope equation. So if you put x equal to 0, you'll be getting minus w will cube by 6 ea. 
dOB dx equal to minus WLQ by 6 EI is theta B. Then to find a deflection in the free end, put x equal to 0 in the equation B. This That is a deflection equation. If you put deflection equation, you will be getting WL4 by 8EA. WL4 by 8EA. So this again a standard uh, problem that is cantilever beam with UDL will have maximum slope as WLQ by 6EA. Maximum deflection as WL4 by 8EA. And then we can give uh, using this uh, double integration method we have derived using these equations we may ask the students to calculate the uh, numerical work we can do we can ask them to do some numerical work say for example a cantilever beam 120 mm by 150 mm uh, is 1.8 meter long determine the slope and deflection at the free end of the beam when it is when it carries a point load of 20 kN at its free end. okay so this is a numerical example so we, first we need to teach them how to derive these uh, equations and then we should teach them how to apply this uh, equation because practically we need to find uh, deflection of beams and all, okay we, because we need to check for deflection after designing any beam and we should also tell them why we are uh, studying these things or why we are why we want to find a slope and deflection and all okay so in order to check whether the, it is safe the, whether the, uh, the beam is safe or against the deflection then we need to find the actual deflection and uh, check with the allowable deflection. That's why we are finding or we are learning how to find slope and deflection in case of beams. Okay. So this uh, uh, numerical example. So we very well know that uh, slope and deflection will be maximum at the free end. Uh, slope at the free end is theta b. Uh, theta b we have derived uh, minus w l squared by 2ea. We need to use capital W because for point load use capital W. For UDL use small w. So minus W L squared by 2 EA, W is 20 kN, L is 1.8 meter, Hink's modulus 2, 200 GPA, okay, 210.49 Newton per uh, meter squared, and then moment of inertia. In case of rectangle beam, it will be PD cube by 12. Breadth is this and depth is this. The thing we need to teach them is we need to teach them how to arrive or use consistent system of units a consistent system of units say for example uh, load is in one unit and uh, the span is in uh, meters load is in kilonewton span is in meters but finally we want uh, uh, deflection in millimeters and the size the section size is millimeters therefore we'll have a consistent system of units so here say for example uh, it is 20 kilonewton we need to teach them how to convert into kilonewton uh, so 20 k replaced by 10 power 3 so 20 10 power 3 newton Similarly, L length is 1.8 meter, have in millimeters. So 1.8043 millimeters. Then Young's modulus. Young's modulus is 200 GPA. This also we should need, uh, teach them how to convert this uh, because most of the students they make mistakes in a uh, unit conversion. They will not use unit at all unless you teach them how, what will be the appropriate units or how to derive the units. That is more important. We should not mug up any units. We should make them uh, learn uh, deriving any units. So 200 GPA, we know that G stands for 10 power 9. G stands for 10 power 9, therefore 200 10 power 9. And PA means Pascal, Newton per meter squared. Newton per meter squared. But we want a Newton per millimeter squared. Okay, we want a Newton per millimeter squared. Because uh, force we have converted into Newton, uh, distance we have converted into millimeters, and the section is in millimeters. Okay, therefore Newton per meter squared need to be converted to Newton per millimeter squared. So one meter squared it will be thousand squared. Therefore, we need to divide by ten power six. Therefore, we'll be getting two hundred ten power five newton per mm squared. So substituting these values, we'll be getting slope, and the unit for slope will be radians. Okay, so unit for slope will be slope, or we can call it as rotation. Slope or rotation, the units will be radians. Okay, we're getting in radians. So a moment, I moment of inertia is BDQ by twelve. Breadth is one twenty mm, depth is one fifty mm. Therefore. You can so they'll be getting the slope at the free end is 5.76 millimeters 5.76 millimeters in case if we get us 5.76 meters then that will indicate that we have somewhere gone wrong in some unit conversion okay, because the deflection will be very uh, minimum it will not be in five meters above okay so that we do we need to teach now next i'll go to next example
now uh, with the derived with the derived expressions okay with the derived expressions so first let us complete this cantilever beam before going to the uh, simply supported beam uh, okay so that's why i'm uh, concentrating more on uh, cantilever beams now so next session we'll be having uh, this uh, macalis method the macalis method will be best suited for uh, simply supported beams and this double integration method will be best suited for this cantilever beams so you have a cantilever beam 3 meter long carries a point load of 20 kN at a distance of 2 meters from the fixer end okay from the fixer end it is uh, the load is acting at 2 meters determine the slope and deflection at the free end of the beam okay so uh, we need to find slope and deflection at the free end but the load is acting here so so far we have derived in the actual derivation if we are derived keeping the load at the free end only not at some distance from the free end so we should teach them how to find uh, deflection at the free end when the load is uh, say at uh, located some distance from the free end okay so for that first we need to calculate a uh, slope at this uh, point c okay so uh, imagining that there is no portion cb so you imagine there is no portion cb then this will be a cantilever beam with point load at the free end c becomes a free end if there is no portion cb so at the free end the slope is wl squared by 2ea okay minus wl squared by 2ea so we can find slope at c theta c okay and since there is no load since there is no load beyond the c the slope will be maintained the slope at c will be equal to slope at b that we can show the deflection and see here theta c will be equal to theta b theta b will be equal to c that is the slope at the free end will be equal to slope at the uh, point where load is applied since there is no load beyond the load therefore uh, that uh, the slope will be maintaining the same whatever slope you find here that will be the slope here also because it will be it will become parallel okay? so the slope will be same however deflection will be increasing say we can find deflection at under the load point and if you find deflection at the free end this deflection plus some increment will be the deflection at the free end that you have shown here this is the given beam okay this is the load okay this is the load so the deflection at c point is yc deflection at c point is yc deflection at b point is yb we want actually yb so y this yb will be equal to this yc plus y1 yb will be equal to yc yc means deflection under the load point plus y1 y1 is this remaining distance that will give you yb so yc how to find deflection at this point we have derived wlq by 3a wlq by 3a so using that expression we can find the deflection at this point c the deflection at this point c so that deflection plus y1 will give you the deflection at b so this y1 will be equal to this y1 will be equal to whatever the slope at c we have slope at c multiplied by this length okay slope at c multiplied by this length cb multiplied by the length cb will give you this increment y1 this is uh, based on r theta con r and theta concept okay when you have arc length when you want to find arc length say r is the radius and theta is the angle subtended by the arc then r theta will be the arc length so similarly here the distance the distance multiplied by theta will give you this length y1 therefore y1 will be equal to theta c into bc we know this distance bc therefore you can find y1 therefore yc plus y1 will give you deflection at b so this sort of problems will may come in the university uh, examination so we should teach them how to derive the general deflection equations as well we should teach them how to apply for numerical examples so here this is for cantilever with udl because we have derived it. just now we have derived for udl so we know that a cantilever beam subjected to udl the slope maximum slope will be wlq by 6ea and the maximum deflection will be wl44 by 8ea but here you see the loading is only up to point c but we want slope and deflection at b so similar concept similar concept so what we can do is find slope at c and slope at c will be equal to slope at b so thereby we can find slope at b so slope at c will be equal to wl power 4 by sorry, wlq by 6ea instead of l we need to use only 1.2 meter because we ignore this portion cb we imagine that there is no cb and if uh, slope at this point will be wlq by 
6a. Instead of L, I will put L1. L1 one. L one is 1 point emitter. Therefore, I can find slope at C. That will be equal to slope at B. Then slope at C multiplied by this length, B1 will be the increment. So that increment plus Yc will give you the deflection at the free. That is the concept here. Okay. So we know that the deflection at uh, this uh, point will be WL44 by 80A. So you can deflection at C will be WL44 with this Yc will be WL44 by 80A. Instead of L, we need to use L1 plus the increment. So that increment will be theta C multiplied by CB. Here we have it. Okay. So you can find slope and deflection at any point using this. Okay. You have any clarification in this? No, sir. Yes. So double integration is the basic concept is first we should teach our students how to form the Bending moment equation, because that bending moment equation is the basis for double integration method, because we have Ei d square a by dx squared equal to minus mxx. So once they form this mxx correctly, then it is matter of integrating twice and finding the constants of integration using the boundary conditions, using the boundary conditions. Then actually, I have taken the moment area method in the for the thing, but moment area I think uh, will not be interested. Okay, so let me go to some other loading. Madam, uh, shall I start the McAllis method now? Because uh, in McAllis method, I have more examples to cover. Sir, Vijay, sir. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Uh, start, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Actually, one more example in double integration method for cantilever beam. We can uh, teach our students the cantilever beam with uniformly varying load. Actually, I was searching for the varying load. But, uh, I I'll send you okay, the material. Now we'll start with the McAllis method. Okay. See, McAllis method is also McAllis method is also a double integration method, but it is refined. It's not different. Actually, there's a mistake. Refined double integration method. The double integration method, which we have studied uh, right now, that will be in a refined form. That will be in a refined form. Uh, that hence it is called refined double integration method. McAllis method is the refined double integration method. Okay. So let us take a simply supported beam with central point load. Let us take simply supported beam with central point load. And how, well, let us see how we are going to apply the McAllis uh, method. Okay. So as I told you earlier, in case of simply supported beams, in case of simply supported beams, first we need to find the support reactions. First we need to find the support reactions. Okay. So to find the support reaction, we need to use the basic equations of equilibrium, static equilibrium. That is sigma v equal to 0 and sigma m equal to 0. So using sigma v equal to 0, upward positive, using sigma v equal to 0, upward positive, we have Ra plus Rb minus W equal to 0. Okay? Ra plus Rb minus W equal to 0. Therefore, Ra plus Rb equal to W. Then using sigma m equal to 0 and taking moments of all forces above A. Okay? So W into L by 2 will be the moment produced by this force about A. So W into L by 2. Then Rb will produce anti-clockwise moment. So minus Rb into L equal to 0. Therefore, Rb equal to W by 2. And hence, Ra equal to W by 2. Okay? So either you can use these static equations of equilibrium to find the support reactions or we can use the principle of symmetry. That is, for symmetrically loaded, Ra should be equal to Rb, equal to total load divided by 2, therefore W by 2. Okay. Now, to find bending mode at x section, xx, to find bending mode at section xx, we have two portions, portion AC as well as portion CB. Okay. Portion AC as well as portion CB. So, first we consider section in portion AC. Okay. Section in portion AC. 
So bending over at section xx will be equal to force multiplied by distance. Force is W by 2, distance is x. So and this will produce clockwise moment, left to clockwise, left to clockwise. So left clockwise means W by 2 into x, left to clockwise positive, therefore plus W, w by 2 into x. Okay? So plus Wx by 2. Then bending over at this point, bending over at this section, section in portion CB. So can anyone of you tell me what will be the bending over in section XX in portion CB? Just ignore this section. For portion CB, I want MXX. I have two loads, this load as well as this load. So this load will produce a moment and this load will produce a moment. So what is the moment produced by this load? Please, about this section. So W by 2 into X. OK. And what is the nature of moment produced by this? Left side uh, clockwise. clockwise plus positive. Therefore, W by 2 into X. And this force will produce a moment of W into I want this distance. L by two. Uh, I want this distance. So the distance between the load, line of action of the load and our section will be x minus L by 2. x minus L by 2. Therefore, this will become W x by 2 minus W into x minus L by 2. So these are the two MXX equations. The MXX equation, that is bending out in any section xx. Equation in portion AC is W x by 2. And bending out equation in portion CB is W x by 2 minus W into x minus L by 2. Okay. And we have the governing differential equation. We have the governing differential equation as EI d squared over dx squared equal to minus mxx. Okay. EI d squared over dx equal to minus mxx. So EI d squared over dx is equal to minus of, use a bracket. Okay. Use a bracket. We have two portions. We have two portions. So for the first two portion, we have Wx by 2. So write Wx by 2 here. Okay. Wx by 2. So this is the equation for portion AC, equation for portion AC. And we need to write the equation for portion BC. So for portion BC, we have Wx by 2 minus W into X minus L by 2. Okay. So this Wx by 2 is common term. Wx by 2 is common for this portion as well for this portion. Okay. So this Wx by 2 is common for portion AC as well for portion CB. Therefore, we put we put it we need to put a dotted line we need to put a dotted line or partition like this and write only the additional term only the additional term involved in this equation okay because this is a common wx by 2 here wx by 2 here therefore i have written here and we write only the additional or extra term so the extra term will be minus w into x minus l by 2 okay minus w into x minus l by 2 need to be written after the partition or after the dotted line then close the bracket so this is the rule which we need to use in Macaulay's method. Okay? Macaulay's method. So we may think why this Macaulay's method has been found. Why you, okay, the reason, I will tell you the reason. Say so we have already studied the double integration method. We already said that is E A D squared over D is equal to MXX. But we have two MXX values. Okay? Here we have one MXX value and another MXX value. So if you go by the regular uh, double integration method, then we need to do uh, two times integration for this portion and then again we need to do uh, two times integration for portion cb here we will involve two constants of integration and in this process we will have two constants of integration therefore we will be having four constants of integration which need to be found using the boundary conditions so that will be a laborious process and in case uh, if we have uh, many many number of loads if you have only a single load then if you have two or three point loads then the procedure becomes still cumbersome okay we need to have more many sections or many portions we need to write a many word equation for every portion then every portion will involve two constants of integration then we need to substitute the boundary and find the constants so likewise it will go so now to minimize that uh, Macaulay has refined the double integration method and the rule he has uh, found our device is you write the uh, MXX equations in a single line with partitions, with partitions and avoiding the repeating terms, avoiding the repeating terms. So in this equation, I have WX by 2 and this equation, I have WX by 2 minus WX minus L by 2. So when I intend to write for this portion, 
leave this common term. So common term has already been written. So additional term is minus W and X minus L by 2. Okay. So when we operate this minus sign, when you operate this minus sign on this, so it will be minus WX by 2, then dotted line or partition, minus of minus plus W into X minus L by 2. That is equation 1. Okay. Any clarification required in this point? How do we write this common equation? Michaelis method. No, sir. So, the rest of the things will be same. That is, we will be integrating twice this equation. Okay. So, integrating 1, integrating 1, we will be getting, this is the first equation, e d square b is equal to minus w x by 2 dot or line plus w x minus l by 2, integrating this 1 with respect to x. So, if we integrate this term, I will be getting minus w x squared by 2 plus constant of integration c1 dotted line, here I have dotted line, plus w into the rule in Michaelis method is, the rule in Michaelis method is, we should not integrate this by separating the terms. This should be treated as a single term and integrated. Okay. This x minus L by 2 should be considered as a single term capital X. So when you integrate capital X, what will get x squared by 2. So treat the entire term as x. And if you integrate x squared by 2, it is not x squared by 2 minus Lx by 2. You should not integrate separately by separating the terms. That is a rule in Michaelis method. Okay. So we need to treat this term as a single term. So if I treat this as a single term, x minus L by 2 whole squared by 2. x minus L by 2 whole squared by 2 will be the. So here I have given the explanation. In this method, we treat the term in bracket as a single term. That is capital X. And when I integrate capital X, it will be x squared by 2. That's, that's, that's why W into x minus L by 2 was x minus L by 2 whole squared by 2. So this is the explanation for this expression. Okay. So in Michaelis method, this thing we need to remember. We should integrate or we should uh, integrate uh, keeping this or uh, treating this as a single term. Therefore, EA dO by dx. When you integrate d squared by dx squared, I'll get dO by dx. And when I integrate x, I'll get x squared by 2. And already 2 is there. Therefore, x squared by 4 plus c1. Open the our, uh, dotted line or partition. And plus w into x minus l by 2 whole squared by 2. That is equation 2. Then integrating this equation 2 with respect to x, you will get e i y minus w x q by 12 plus c1 x plus c2 then dotted line plus w into and now I need to treat this as single term. So x minus l by 2 will be treated as single term x squared. So x squared when I integrate x cube by 3, therefore x minus l by 2 whole cube by 3, already 2 is there, therefore 6. Okay. So by doing this, we are cutting short the constants of integration. We are resulting in only two constants of integration. And whenever you are, uh, if you do separately, if you do the for two portions separately, say for portion AC, if you do once, and for portion uh, BC, if you do once, as in the case of double integration method, which you already studied, then in every process, we'll involve two constants of integration, and then the time will consume will be more. So to reduce that, it has refined the double integration method, and these small uh, terms we need to, or these two rules we need to follow. That is, while writing the many mode equation in the uh, general differential equation, uh, avoid uh, repeating the common terms. So common term can be written only once. Then use dotted line and write only the extra terms in every portion. Okay, in every portion will be involving some extra equations or extra terms. Only those extra terms need to be written after the partition. That is the rule. That is rule number one. And another rule is while integrating, the term within bracket should be treated as a single term and integrated. It should not be separated and integrated. Okay, should be single term. These are the two rules which need to be followed for Michaelis method. Okay. Now, to find the constants of integration C1 and C2, we need to use the boundary conditions. So, the or to derive or generate the boundary conditions, we should uh, teach the students how the beam will deflect. How the beam, a simply supported beam, how will it deflect? Yeah, simply supported beam will be deflecting like this. Okay. 
So here, if I draw a, draw a tangent, and if I measure the angle between the horizontal axis and the tangent, that will be theta a. And if I draw a tangent here, and if I measure the angle between the horizontal axis and this tangent, this will be theta b. Okay. So I'll be having some slope at a. I'll be having some slope at b. Okay. Whereas the deflection at this point a, and deflection at point b are zero. Okay. So here there won't be any deflection. Similarly, here there won't be any deflection. So I can use these two as the boundary conditions. That is, when x equal to zero, when x equal to zero, y equal to zero, when x equal to l, that is, when x equal to span l, y equal to zero. These are the two boundary conditions in case of all simply supported beams. You can use these boundary conditions. Okay. In cantilever beam, how to make our students remember? In case of cantilever beam, we should make them remember that at fixed support, slope is zero and deflection is zero. In case of simply supported beams, at both the supports, at both the supports, deflection is zero. So the, if, they, if they remember this uh, simple logic, they can understand or generate the uh, boundary conditions because boundary conditions are more important. They should not get confused in the boundary conditions. So simply make them remember that the at support point, there won't be any deflection in case of simply supported beam. And in case of cantilever beam, we have one free end and one fixed end. At fixed end, we will not be having any slope or deflection. So these things we should make them remember the boundary condition. So the boundary conditions will be when x equal to 0, y equal to 0. That is, x equal to 0 means it represents point A. When x equal to L, y equal to 0. If this x equal to L represents point B. Therefore, at point B, deflection is 0. So these are the two boundary conditions in case of simply supported D. So using this boundary condition, and here you may notice that in case of uh, cantilever beam, we used uh, one slope boundary condition and when one uh, deflection boundary condition. But here we do not have any uh, slope boundary condition because we can't write it. You can't say slope is zero here or see here. Okay, whereas we can say deflection is zero here, deflection is zero here. So the boundary conditions here, both the boundary conditions are deflection boundary conditions. Therefore, naturally, we need to use this uh, deflection boundary conditions in the deflection equation. We not we can't use in this equation. Okay, so now we need to use the boundary conditions in this equation in the equation three because equation three deals with deflection. Equation two deals with slope. We do not have any slope boundary condition. We have only deflection boundary condition. Okay, so when x equal to zero, y equal to zero, and one more thing is we are measuring x from the left end. In case of cantilever beam, we are measuring x from the right end or free end because the right end is the free end. That's why we measure. Here we are measuring from the left end. So at a x equal to zero, therefore at x equal to zero deflection is zero. When x equal to l deflection is zero. So using boundary condition one in equation three, okay, using boundary condition one in equation three, and one more thing we need to uh, teach our students is we can use the boundary condition one up to the dotted line alone, up to the dotted line alone. Can you tell me the reason why we need to use the boundary condition one up to dotted line only? Can you infer the reason? X1 is zero within the AC. Yes, it lies in portion AC, okay? X equal to zero, very well said. Okay, well said. Okay, when X equal to zero means now that lies in portion AC. That lies, this point x equal to zero lies in portion AC. Therefore, we should this up to dotted line. Uh, the equation is restricted up to dotted line for portion AC. When you use the full equation, that indicates that we are uh, extending beyond point C. That for portion CB, we can use the entire equation. Okay. So x equal to zero means it is for uh, it lies in portion AC. X equal to L means it lies in portion CB. So when you want to use ECB, then you can use the entire equation. When you want to use for portion AC, you need to use up to dotted line. Therefore, they have mentioned here, using boundary condition 1 in equation 3, up to dotted line, up to the dotted line. Dotted line means partition. So when you put y equal to 0, x equal to 0, then you will get c2 equal to 0. Okay. So using boundary condition 2, now we will, when we use the boundary condition 2, yeah, boundary condition 2 here. Boundary condition 2 in the equation 3 for the entire equation. You can use for the full equation. Here they have written using boundary condition 2 in 
third equation up to third equation up to the full you can use the full equation okay, to full not up to dotted line so you'll get zero equal to minus w will give it all plus c1l plus c2 dotted line w into l minus l by 2 whole cube plus 6 so we'll be getting this therefore if you simplify you'll be getting c1 equal w l squared by 16. okay okay so for the second boundary condition can be substituted in the entire equation and we can get the value of c1 now the general equation for slope the general equation for slope is put the c1 c2 values in the equation so ea dy by dx equal to minus w x squared by 4 plus w l squared by 16 dotted line plus w into x minus l by 2 whole square by 2 that is equation a so equation a is the general equation for slope then the general equation for deflection will be ei y equal to minus wx cube by 12 plus wl squared by 16x plus c2 will be there c2 is 0 therefore leave c2 dotted line plus w into x minus l by 2 whole cube by 6 that is equation b so this is the general equation for slope and deflection so using these general equations we can find slope at any required point in the span a b similarly we can find deflection at any required point in the span a b and one thing we need to remember is when I want to find slope, when I want to find slope at any required point in portion AC, in portion AC, I can restrict up to daughter line. Up to daughter line, if I use that will give me the value. When, you, when, when any point is beyond point C and if it is in portion uh, PC, then you need to use the entire equation that we need to uh, teach our students or remind our students because they will not they should not use the entire equation uh, when there is a point in portion ac okay when we are interested in any point in portion ac up to dotted line is enough only for points after c that is in portion bc we need to use the entire equation okay now let us see how to find slope and deflection at different points so to find slope at supports and okay? slope at a support a so we need to put i want if i want slope at a i need to put x equal to zero in the slope equation in the slope equation up to dotted line that is more important up to dotted line because x equal to zero lies in portion ac so up to dotted line if you put x equal to zero i'll be getting ea dv is equal to w squared by 60 therefore dv is equal to w squared by 60 ei so slope at a will be w l squared by 16 EI. Okay. Then slope at B. So slope at B, if I want slope at B, then I can put x equal to L, I can put x equal to L in the entire equation. I need not restrict up to dotted line. So here that is missing, up to dotted line is missing. Put x equal to 0 in A up to the dotted line. And when I want slope at B, I can put x equal to L in the entire equation. So if you put x equal to L in the entire equation, We'll be getting theta b s minus w l squared by 60 ei okay similarly when i want deflection at any point say for example i want to find maximum deflection okay to find the maximum deflection so you, you can see the deflected shape of uh, simply supported beam so this will be the deflected shape okay? this will be the deflected shape so we very well know deflection at support a and deflection at support b will be zero and deflection will be maximum here under the point load. The okay, deflection will be maximum under the. So these are the deflection values. This is deflection value. Distance between the horizontal axis and the deflected shape of the. Beam. So here deflection will be maximum under the load point. However, we should find where uh, the deflection will be maximum. Where deflection will be maximum. So where slope is zero. Okay, where slope is zero, deflection will be maximum. Okay, where slope is 0, deflection will be maximum. So we need to find where slope is 0 to find the maximum deflection. Let me see here. To find the maximum deflection, maximum deflection will occur where slope is 0. Therefore, equating the slope equation to 0, we get minus wl squared by 4 plus wl plus 16 equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to L by 2. So, this indicates that x equal to L by 2 deflection will be maximum. So, this, uh, this again, up to dotted line, you can equate to 0 first. And if required, you can use the entire equation. 
Okay. If it is not satisfied, then you can use the entire equation. I'll tell you in the subsequent examples when we use the entire equation, when we have to use the equation up to dotted line. Okay. So here we are using equation of slope equation up to the dotted line to zero. So equating the slope to zero, I get x equal to l by two. Therefore, at x equal to l by two, deflection will be maximum. So put x equal to l by two in the deflection equation up to the dotted line, we'll be getting maximum deflection. So maximum deflection will be W L Q by 48 EI. So in case of simply supported beam, we need to find slope at supports and we need to find the maximum deflection. Similarly, we need to find deflection under the load points. These are things which will be asked in the examination. Say, for example, they may give you uh, they may give uh, two point loads. Say, for example, a, a simply supported beam of span six meters subject to two point loads of 10 kN and 15 kN at two meter and four meters from the left end. Obtain the slope at supports and deflection under the load points. Okay, deflection under the load points. So we need to find deflection under the load points and also maximum deflection. So the procedure to find maximum deflection is equate slope to zero. Okay, equate slope to zero. Find where slope is zero and substitute that value in the deflection equation and get the maximum deflection. Okay. You have any doubt in this uh, simply supported beam with point load example? Any doubt can be clarified, madam? Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. We can have a small break, sir. Okay, for a 10 minutes break at the huh? okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.